and saddle sure sing that song. But there's so much more, like we always say. So let me ask you this. So if I told each of you to walk around a city multiple times to get inside, would you believe me? Probably not. After all, that seems like the impossible. And yet that's exactly what Joshua and the Israelites are doing. That's because, and I love saying this, we serve a God who works in the impossible. No task God gives us is beyond our reach and no barrier will keep you from accomplishing it. The Israelites needed to conquer Jericho to start their conquest of the Promised Land. But Jericho was a formidable city. Many cities of that day had strong defensive walls to keep invaders like the Israelites out. To break those walls down would require a lengthy siege. The Israelites would have to surround the city for months, keeping the inhabitants inside and starving them out. They would need their own supplies, including siege weapons. And they had none of those things. Instead, they had someone, and that someone was God. He didn't need siege weapons or supplies. Before him, those walls were nothing. It would be like making a wall of cardboard boxes. You could easily push it down. And God is able to overcome these obstacles. We see that a lot throughout scriptures. For instance, in the day of Pentecost, he beats the language barrier. The Israelites had seen him split the Red Sea, a, de a definite barrier, so they could walk straight through it. And I personally experienced God's barrier breaking. After all, I'm sitting here in front of you reading scripture, even though my eyes aren't working. And I'm talking to you, even though I'm frightened of crowds and public speaking. And that's because these barriers mean nothing to God. It's just another chance for him to show us how wonderful he is. And the Israelites knew that those walls of Jericho were coming down, as the song says. Because no barrier can stand against the God who made the universe itself. But even still, they needed to be led. How many of you have ever worked in groups? Every task or assignment needs someone to take the lead and direct the others, right? And the Israelites decided they would follow God. Notice that God told Joshua to have the ark go in front with its guard and its priests. And that's because the ark was a physical representation of God's throne and his glory. So with the ark in front, it was like the king himself was riding into battle on their behalf. The Israelites could truly say God was leading them. How many of us have set out on a task given by God? Or really just a task in general? And how many of us would be willing to just step aside and let God do the leading? I'm sure many of us have wanted to make our own paths without God. I've tried before. We'd rather wait for him on the sidelines or have him bring up the rear instead of taking the lead. We'd rather he fix the problems after we encounter them instead of trusting and following him to keep us out of them in the first place. And that's a mistake. I can personally attest to that. Whenever I've tried to take the reins away from God and be the leader, it hasn't really gone well for me at all. Sometimes I sit and think, if only I'd known then what I know now, and just decided 
to step aside and let God do what he does best. Let me explain it like this. You guys remember playing follow the leader as a child? I'm sure everybody does. Well, let's try doing it with everybody but the leader being blindfolded. You need to trust the leader's words and directions to keep you from falling over or getting hurt. And I've played that game every single day. <coughs> How many of you have guided me around before? I think almost everybody in this room, at least once. In those instances, I have to trust you to be my leader so that I don't go astray or run into something and hurt myself. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> and yes, many people who have led me have run me into stuff. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. I'm, I'm so glad that happened just now. But when we're doing that, you're guiding me. I can't tell you which way you're supposed to go. You're leading. I'm following. If I try to lead, well, it really would be the blind leading the blind man. And in the same way, the Israelites trusted God to keep them safe, even when what they were asked to do didn't make sense. And that's the important part about this whole thing. God's going to lead us, even though we may not understand what he's asking us to do. I mean, what sense did it make to have the army walk around the walls for six days in a row, one time, and then on the seventh day, seven times, and then be shocked? Doesn't make much sense. Maybe God wanted to show the Israelites how powerful he was, and how the land was once again promised to them. After all, no one from Jericho even dared to attack them. I said at the beginning, and it's going to pay off right now. History another time. So picture for a moment that you're a soldier and an army from antiquity. If you walk around walls like that, you make yourself an easy target for arrows and sling stones. And yet, the Israelites were safe because God was leading. Sure, it might not make much sense, but that doesn't change anything. I think that this morning, God is ready to knock down some barriers today. Maybe they're in your life. Is there something that God is calling you to do, but you've let the barriers get in your way? You see the walls and don't think about the city behind it. Or maybe the barriers are surrounding you. Either one, God will knock down easily. That's because we can't hold it back. After all, we just remember last week we celebrated the stone that was meant to keep Jesus in his grave was powerless to stop him from coming out. Or maybe God is calling you right now to step out of that comfort zone you've put yourself into. Maybe what he wants you to do doesn't make much sense. Trust me, when it doesn't, that's when you can expect a miracle. So much of what God does doesn't make sense to us at first. I'm sure Elijah didn't understand why God was sending him to the very people who wanted to kill him. I'm sure Joshua didn't understand why they were walking around the walls instead of trying to climb them or tunnel under them. And I didn't understand when God sent me to Romania. It doesn't make it any less wonderful when he acts. So if that's you today, I'd like you to listen very carefully to what I'm going to say next. Whether it's a barrier that needs to come down in order for you to conquer whatever it is God has called you to do, or a task that doesn't make much sense to you, please follow the example we've got here from Joshua. Step back and let God lead. I can tell you it will be more than you could possibly have imagined. It may be tough, and in fact, I can definitely tell you it will be. But our God is a conqueror who will lead us through the dangers of this world into a glorious kingdom he's prepared, just like he led Joshua. As a friend of mine loves to say, let go and let God. So Christopher is going to bring our benediction, but first I'd like to close for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us all here together as a family. Thank you that we can gather and hear your words and learn from you. Lord, I just ask right now that you help us to put on our armor, and strap on our swords, and be ready for the battle that's coming. Lord, maybe we're walking around Jericho, and Lord, I just ask that if we are, you show us that the walls will come down. Father, I ask that 
and to give us faith this morning to trust you, to follow you, and to let you be the leader. And we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.